Indeed, targeted therapy has uh, revolutionized lung cancer treatment. This has led to substantial reduction in lung cancer mortality over the past uh, decade, more so accelerated in the last five years. And this is uh, uh, certainly very, very encouraging and great news for our patients. KRAS in particular has been deemed the undruggable oncogene since its discovery 40 years ago. And despite heavy investment in, the, uh, uh, in research, in clinical trials, uh, many, many efforts have failed, largely uh, because the KRAS uh, oncoprotein encoded by the KRAS oncogene is round and smooth and difficult to, to drug. There's no pocket that you can insert a drug to lock it up. And it's like a tennis ball. If you want a lock and key approach, it bounces off the key. There's actually uh, no pocket for, for the uh, no lock and key approach for this round, smooth protein. Uh, thanks to translational uh, science uh, and uh, mechanistic discovery, this was that work done in, uh, with uh, UCLA with Dr. Shokat, as well as Memorial Sloan Kettering in New York with Dr. Piro Lido, Neil Rosen, and many other scientists colleagues. We found a, a way to trap the KRAS oncoprotein in its inactive state. By binding the drug in its GDP bound inactive state, we can actually trap it. There is a little groove that opens up and you put a drug in it and you lock it up and it doesn't wake up to the active state. So in that state, we can shut down the KRAS signaling. And once the cancer signaling is, is uh, shut down, the cancer cells die. So this served as the mechanistic uh, basis for KRAS G12C inhibitors, which has certainly uh, been a watershed moment in oncology, in especially uh, in lung cancer, uh, converting an undruggable uh, oncogene to a druggable one. And so that is uh, not only a step forward for those patients, but it ushers a new mindset in terms of uh, def achieving uh, the near impossible. And this uh, coincides with the wave of other targeted therapies in development, including EGFR, ALK, ROS, uh, we've got BRAF mutations, RET fusions, uh, and now HER2 mutations also on the horizon with highly effective targeted therapies uh, in, in uh, late stage development. So this is uh, certainly good news uh, for patients. However, resistance does develop. These drugs don't work forever for most patients. And we need to understand why. How does the cancer outsmart the drug? And how do we know that in advance? We have to figure out the patterns of these tumor bypass, bypass signaling and, and other ways to overcome the drug so we can be a step ahead and perhaps hit it harder, more comprehensively to shut it down. And that's the basis for this biomarker analysis using uh, ctDNA technology. This is a non-invasive liquid biopsy. It's a blood draw, a blood test that's, uh, that we can do at the time of routine blood tests that patients uh, have. Uh, so, so we don't have to stick a needle into the tissue, which can sometimes be uh, inconvenient or even risky with complications. While it's still an important part of the uh, comprehensive genomic analysis of tissue, uh, the liquid biopsy does offer a very uh, patient-centric supplement to genomic analysis and often the preferred way to do genomic analysis uh, with a non-invasive approach first. So we used currently available technologies uh, with ctDNA analysis to, to really sequence the tumor DNA floating in the bloodstream of those patients before and after treatment with sotorasib and to understand how the tumors actually evolve and how genomically how they, they, they change in the bloodstream, especially at the time of progression. And we, we, we uh, set out to, to map it all out to understand the cancer biology, its behavior, so we can better develop drugs uh, to hit it.